I really like spade bits, and that's because they work so well, although most woodworkers shun them. They have a prejudice against them because unless they're sharpened properly, they're not going to work all that well. So I want to show you a few things that you can do with spade bits, and most importantly, how you can get them really sharp so that they cut as cleanly as any other kind of fine woodworking bit you might try. The beauty of a spade bit is that you can re-grind it to different configurations. That's something you can't do with any other kinds of bit. Take a look here. This is a stock spade bit. It's sharp and ready to go and it'll work just fine for you. It's got some spurs on the corners to help it cut more cleanly. But what if you want a hole that's just slightly smaller than a standard size? Well, this half inch bit, as you can see here along the edges, I've re-ground it so it's slightly smaller than the half inch size and it works perfectly with tapered wooden plugs. Uh, these bits here are for situations where I couldn't tolerate the long spur, the long central spur coming through on the bottom edge of the hole because it would have punched through a visible part of the project. So I simply ground down the central spur and made it work um, much like any other kind of shallow bit, like a Forstner bit or a sawtooth bit. So let's go to the grinder now and I'm going to show you some of the tricks that let me do great things with spade bits. This three-quarter inch spade bit has never been sharpened before, but it's working a little sad. It's lost some of the edge, the crispness of the spurs is gone, but I can re-establish all that and make this bit cut at least as good as new with a few minutes at the grinder. The trick is to get the angle of the tool rest just right. You want the leading edge of the cutting surfaces to be slightly higher than the trailing edges. And because these bits turn clockwise, that means that the left side of the cutter, as it lays on the tool rest here, um, needs to be angled upwards, as you can see here on the wheel. Now, I'm not going to worry about the presence of the spurs. They're going to get ground off, but in practice, that's not going to matter at all. So come and take a close look and watch how I grind one side and then the other. So I'm going to switch on the grinder. I'm using a cool running stone to minimize heat buildup. And I'm going to be grinding the left side. Because my blade, my tool rest is tilted this way, I want to grind like this, very gently. I don't want to grind like this because that will angle the cutter in exactly the opposite direction that I want. So I just a few contact points here, flip over, a few here. I don't need to complete it all in one go. I only want to touch the wheel briefly to minimize heat buildup. Now that is a nicely sharpened spade bit and it's going to work really well. Now the edges of this bit are still pretty sharp. I don't need to redo them again, but if I was going to reduce the size of hole that the drill made, or if I wanted to crispen up the edges, I would also use the same angle to just gently grind one side of the bit and then the other until the newly ground surface existed all the way across the edge of the bit. So now I've got my newly sharpened spade bit in the drill press. This is a block of ash and let's just see how well it cuts. What you end up with is a nice, clean, crisp hole of whatever size you want. And spade bits are cheap to buy, too.